Hey guys, it's Condor. Welcome back to It Moves. In the last one, I got scared pissless with baby dolls and creepy crying. And my mother got, or my mother, my grandmother got dementia, which means I'm vulnerable. And this is our nightmare, which is supposed to be terrifying. Don't touch things. Anyway, I don't want terrifying because the last one with the dolls, the fuck, like I can't even explain. When I was younger, my uh, grandmother used to watch, well she still does, but back then when you were like five, they're fucking terrifying, and the Chucky, the Chucky movies terrified me, and I'm traumatized to this day. I can't have dolls anywhere near me, and... The older and creepier they are, the more I don't want them near me. So I don't like the last one. No, don't like it. Oh man, the feeling that something's invading your privacy even without ill will is still disturbing. Hello? Ooh! Someone hit the lottery. Did you fucking hear that? What? What are you? You are good. Well, thank you. I try to be a good student. Try to be a good student. Even if you don't know why they are here, you, t you hold the greatest amount of fear for them. Not about fear, maybe annoyance because they're disturbing my privacy. I'm a decently private person. Oh, look at the Triceratops. Bless you. Anyway, this is tr Triceratops, yep. Religious man. Stack of comic books. Bunch of school books. Bathtub. Why is there a bathtub in the middle of the classroom? That's highly inappropriate. The sounds of screams were awful. They are even worse than... They are even worse when they are your own. Oh, shit. I'm not going down there yet. I'm having fun exploring. <sighs> Fucking sounds. Nothing. Oh, there's something on the desk. Piece of paper. Knock, knock. Uh, no one's home! No one's here! No one is here. Ah! Don't! <laughs> Alright. Um. Yep. Yep. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, How do I get out of here? How do I get out of here? This is the door. Here we go. Butterflies. I I What? You're fucking creepy. Big filing cabinet. Bet I could read them. Nothing inside. School materials. Same thing. Is it all gonna be the same thing? Looks like it's all the same thing. Okay. Yep. Nothing in here. Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to go down. Fortunately. Hi! Hi! More rooms to explore. What? Is that an armadillo riding a sheep? Well, that just that that just does it. I'm drunk. You got into your father's liquor cabinet. Can I 
I bet you if I hit them, I die. Or wake up. Excuse me. Don't mind me. Just, yep, there we go. Good. Um. I do not see the point in this. Yeah, I thought I could go down that way. Why is it getting so fucking slow? Alright. I'm not even going to bother with you guys. Nope. Not going to bother. What's in this room? The lock on the door is broken. I don't think I can get in here. Okay. Can't get in there. Can't go over there. I guess I have to go down. School. Oh. Is this where they send the bad kids? Plants. Busted machine. I see a ladder. I'm going down the ladder. Agonizingly slow. This is my fucking maze. I hate that noise. Can't go in there. Okay. It is. What did I do? I don't know where I'm going. I'm just going places. Over here? Sure? Yeah? Wait. This is the... This is the beginning. It is. This way. Different. There we go. Don't like these noises. Oh. Um, hi. Hi. What do you, what do you, what do you, no. What are you doing? Get off the altar. Get off the altar. Clap your fucking hands at me. Oh, Jesus. Get up. Oh no. Oh. They're gonna cut my heart out. Yep, yeah, there we go. Jesus Christ, this kid needs help. You're awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your new room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. Alright then. That's pretty much the conversations I have in real life right there. I woke gradually. The room was once again dark. As my eyes adjusted, I... As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and the door and the walls, some toys on a shelf, and even to this day I shudder to think of it, for there was no noise. 
No rustling of sheets, no movement at all. The room felt lifeless. Lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, hate-filled thing which had terrorized me night after night, was not in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed. Fuck. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Utter terror, utter terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I could not scream, I did not want to let it... What? I lay motionless. If I could not scream, I did not want to let it know I was awake. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. It was obscured under my blanket. I could sense, I could see its outline, and I could feel its presence, but I dared not look. The weight of it pressed down on top of me, a sensation I will never forget. When I say that hours passed, I do not exaggerate. Laying there motionless in the darkness. Fuck, <laughs> the audio is distracting me. Laying there motionless in the darkness, I was every bit as scared and frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months, it would have been light by then. But the grasp of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise, a sunrise which I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I reached a breaking point, a moment where I could wait no more, where I could survive under this intimately... <laughs> It's breathing like the grudge into my ear. I don't like this. I survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you... Oh. Oh. Make you thread bare. That's one word for some reason. A shell of nerves leaving only the slightest trace of you behind. I had to get out of that bed, then I remembered the crucifix. My hand still lay underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist around to find it, minimizing as best I could the sound and vibrations caused, but it could not be found. I had either knocked it off the top bunk, or it had, I can't even bear to think of it, been taken from my hand. Without the crucifix, I lost any sense of hope. Even at such a young age, you can be acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there, dormant, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? Should I leap from the bed and hope that I make it to the door? What if it is faster than, <clears throat> what if it is faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of that top bunk, hoping to not disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Realizing that it had not stirred when I moved, trying to find the crucifix, I began to have the strangest of thoughts. What were you thinking about? Oh, it's another chapter. I thought I was done. <laughs> My mistake. I'm underwater? Fuck yeah, I'm saving. I'm underwater. Cool, I'm Aquaman. I'm hungry though. Give me some of this fish. Tartar sauce and ketchup. Fucking delicious. Oh, can't go that way? Gotta go this way? There we go. How is this supposed to be scary? This is actually nice. I like this. I wonder what I'm gonna run into. Like a giant squid or one of those creepy goblin sharks or uh angler fish they're fucking weird looking what what are you, what are you doing what are you doing are you a, are you an eel can I go down there fucking fish went down there it's not fair oh this There's another person down there. Look, you see that? Another person floating by. What? What? I uh, I don't get it now. I'm stuck. Right 
Really? Oh, I see there's walls there. I think I'd be able to swim over, right? But no, of course not. How do I lower those walls then? Did I miss something? These things? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Down I go. It's like a... Jellyfish. Hello, jellyfish. Who are you? What do you? Where are you going? Where are you going? Do you live down here? This is brilliant. I like it. Yes. Captain Theodore Fielding. September second, two thousand seven. I'm just gonna let you guys read this. I'm not gonna read the whole damn book for you, but I'll read it too. So. Uh, I'm going to read it. One of my biggest fears is deep water. Ironic when you consider the fact that I am now working on a mining station thousands of feet underwater in the Mariana Trench. I have always wondered why I was afraid and reached a simple conclusion. True fear presented here is actually going down beneath the surface into the depths. It's a combination of all of our most common fears. One, fear of the dark. When you're at the bottom of a body of water you can't see anything. It's pitch black. Have you ever tried to swim as far down in a lake as you can? It gets really dark and cold really fast, about 10 feet down. Even that's nothing compared to the deepest point on the entire crust of the earth. Located at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, the Mariana Trench, which is 38,000 feet, 38,000 plus feet, if you put Mount Everest at the bottom of the trench, the top of the mountain would still be over a mile below the surface of the ocean. Everything below you is complete, complete darkness, and this definitely plays into our collective fear of the dark. Fear of suffocating. Have you ever gotten to the point where you swam down too far in the swimming pool and you seriously considered the fact that you might not make it back to the top before you ran out of breath? That must be a huge fucking swimming pool. If you've ever been roughhousing as a kid with blankets and pillows and you accidentally got pinned down inside of a sleeping bag or something, and you get to that point where laughter temporarily turns to screaming, you know what a scary concept not being able to breathe is. Even if you have scuba gear with you down in that deep, dark abyss, there's a chance a valve could pop out or you could run out of oxygen. You can't see and you can't really take a deep breath. Could it get worse? Yes. Fear of the unknown. There are over one million species of creatures in the ocean, and scientists estimate there are an additional nine million species yet to be discovered. That means only that means we only even know what eleven percent of the creatures in the ocean are. Most of the beings in the ocean are things mankind has never even seen or heard of. Who knows what could be down there? Think about a time when you were walking in a dimly lit basement trying to find something. I hate doing that. All of a sudden, something brushes up against the back of your neck. They become, they become airborne, similar to a frightened cat. Instantly turn around and shine their flashlight to see what it was. It's never anything actually scary. But in the deep water, it's always something scary. It's dark, you can barely breathe, and something just touched you, and you have no idea where they just went. But there is more to fear, I'm afraid. Fear of flying insects? What? Imagine that as you're walking along, all of the beetles and scorpions crawling along the ground, the huge black <laughs> hairy spiders that are hidden from view in the cracks, and the slimy and the slimy worms and snakes that are burrowed beneath the ground simultaneously started flying anywhere they wanted. That is what the bottom of the sea without water would be like. For the strange creatures underwater, there is no up or down. 
Even the manliest men, even though they appear to be calm, quickly tense up and become filled with a secret fear that the bug might land on their eyeball or fly into their mouth. And that's why men try so hard to kill them. Uh, they just kill them because they're jerks. Fortunately, in deep water, you can't see any of the undiscovered freakish flying creatures that brush past your body as you grasp at your suffocating throat. Fear of being caught. What is going on? <sighs> Imagine that you're running from a bear. You will be eaten if you are caught, and it doesn't help that bears can run faster sideways <laughs> than the fastest human can run forward. When you're at the bottom of the sea, everything that is around you was built to move in water. If something truly frightening like a shark or a giant squid caught sight of you, you could turn the other way and flail about all you want, but the monster will catch up with you in a split second. You can't get away from anything. Even if you had the wherewithal to see and breathe, you couldn't run from danger. It would simply find you and devour you. There are lots of places that I would, wouldn't want to be, such as trapped in a burning house or alone in the vacuum of space. But in the burning house, at least I can see. And in space, at least there aren't any creatures that could get me. There are no other places in the universe that combine as many common fears as seven miles below the surface of the Pacific Ocean. It is because of the combination of all of, the, all of these fears that I am so horrified by deep water. That is a jelly, not a jellyfish, a starfish, if I remember right. Certain species of starfish. You wrote all that down? Really? You're, you're very dedicated. What's down here? Nothing. Okay, I'm going to follow you. Come here. I like your log book. Very informative. Your sketches were nice too. It's an angler fish! What did I say? I told you guys. Told you. Look at that fucking thing. That's a female. You know the males are like really tiny. They're parasitic. They like shove their bodies inside of the females and then they. Yeah, whatever. Hello? What are you doing down there without gear on? What do you? Oh, I'm falling, floating down. I'm gonna join you, buddy. What are you doing down here? Where am I going? Oh shit! Where am I going? <gasps> Whoa! What happened? What happened? What if it was asleep? It hadn't so much as breathed since I had woken up. Perhaps it was resting, believing that it had finally got me. That I was finally in its grasp. Or perhaps it was toying with me. After all, it had been doing just that for countless nights. And now, with me under it, pinned against my mattress with no mother to protect me, maybe it was holding off, savoring its victory until the last possible moment, like a wild animal savoring its prey. I tried to breathe as shallowly as possible, and mustering every ounce of courage I could, I reached over slowly with my right hand and began to peel the blanket off of me. What I found under those covers almost stopped my heart. I did not see it, but as my hand moved the blanket, it brushed against something. Something smooth and cold. Something which felt unmistakably like a giant hand. A gaunt hand. Whatever. I held my breath in terror as I was sure it must now have known that I was awake. Nothing. It did not stir. It felt dead. After a few moments, I placed my hand carefully further down the blanket and felt a thin, poorly formed forearm. My confidence and my confidence and almost twisted sense of curiosity grew as I moved down further to a disproportionately larger bicep muscle. The arm was outstretched, lying across my chest, with the hand resting on my left shoulder, as if it had grabbed me in my sleep. I realized that I would have to move this cadaverous appendage if I even so much as hoped to escape this grasp. 
For some reason, the feeling of torn, ragged clothing on the shoulders of this night-time invader stopped me in my tracks. Fear once again swelled in my stomach and in my chest as I recoiled my hand in disgust at the touch of straggled, oily hair. I could not bring myself to touch its face, although I wonder if this very day what it would have felt like. Dear God, it moved. Oh God. This is going to pop up and scare me. Another one. Yep. Alright guys, that's enough for this one. That was as terrifying as the last one, but it's good. I'll see you guys in the next one.